Hello and welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Scharner. I'm the founder and president of the Charles River Conservancy. And today we are talking about something I love to talk about and that's swimming in the Charles River. And my guest today is Christine Cousineau, who is a lecturer at Tufts. And I understand that in the process of teaching about swimming in the Charles, that little bug got into you as well. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> it was through following the work of my students that I got completely enthusiastic with the project. Oh, that is wonderful. And, and Christine is an urban planner and architect herself. And um, so she understands the importance of, of um, what swimming means in terms of livability in the city. So, um, the Conservancy has been taking on swimming in the Charles for quite a while and here is our guest and um, we had the pleasure of working with this lecturer Cousineau on, on swimming and from the office Rebecca Hoffman helped us. So how does that fit into what the Conservancy does? Um, we take care of those parklands from the harbour up to the Watertown Dam to making them more active, attractive and accessible. And that means swimming. So we um, asked Stantec to do a feasibility study of how swimming could be done in the Charles River. And that is going to be happening at North Point Park. Um, you see the little round um, island here near the Museum of Science. And the swimming is, happens right there. And it's in the same area where we built a skate park that opened in 2015. Um, and here is an aerial view of where that um, swim park is going to be. Um, North Point Park, where we already have EF1, the white building, EF2, the building more in blue. And they're going to build a third one right behind EF1. So it's going to be a wonderful park. And this is a park that was built with 100 million of mitigation funds from the big dig. Here a different angle where you see the Zaken Bridge and to the right is the Green Line Viaduct. A wonderful location for a swim park. And here you see um, the kind of, it would be the length of an Olympic pool. It's a shallow area, a deep area. So that's kind of where we are in terms of planning. And in order to prove that people want to swim, we have swim events. Um, this is a swim race. And we also have what's called City Splash. We just had the fifth City Splash uh, because we had a commission. And some of the commission members said, but nobody wants to swim. We said, well, yes, we know people want to swim. And so I would like you now, Christine, to tell us um, how um, Tufts, how you and the Tufts students, how you connected with the Charles River Conservancy and our desire to bring swimming to the Charles. Sure. So I teach at UEP, which is the Department of Urban and Environmental Policy and Planning at Tufts, and it's a master's program. And one of the requirements is a practicum called field projects. So every fall, <clears throat> we solicit, uh, actually we start in late August, we solicit projects from different past clients or nonprofits or groups who we think might benefit from a group of students, graduate students working for them on a particular project. And from the proposals that we get, we select some. And you were nice enough to submit a proposal and it got us all excited and we selected you as a client. So um, after that, we present all of these projects in a kickoff event where the client representatives come to Tufts and explain very briefly you know, what their project is about. And the students vote on their first, second, and third choice. And then we try to make teams that maximize people's yeah, choices. As you probably noticed, the, the people who work on the Simul Charles Initiative, like Jennifer Gilbert and Rebecca Hoffman and Catherine Donoher, they're all very excited about that. So obviously it... it um, um, it's it, contagious. It's contagious. Yes. That's yes. The word. Yes. And so we had a lot more people 
wanting to work on the project that ended up working on the project because we have to equalize the teams but this is how we formed the team mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> and then um, that's the that's the report yes so that the, was produced this is the cover of the final report that was the product of the student team so what they did was not look more into the Charles River swim park itself but rather help the project by looking at other cities across the country that were also working on making their urban rivers more swimmable and perhaps even thinking about a floating uh, swimming pool. Yeah. And so that that was their charge. It was to collect this information and bring it back to you. Yeah. And then there was a very specific methodology that you used looking at those um, elements um, I, I, maybe you want to read yes. them, so, you, so how this, do you develop that? The students used six lenses through which to look at all of these projects so that they would ask um, the same questions to all and would have lessons from very specific topics. So one of them is user groups. Obviously, that's a very important one. Who is the intended audience for these uh, urban swimming projects or urban cleanup efforts? who is supposed to be the ultimate users and what are the implications of these different types of users. Families. And they range greatly, yes. I mean, from families to early morning lap swimmers to people who would arrive on a yacht. We have an example of that. Yes. So a, a wide range and, and, you know, also would it be a place where lifeguards could be trained? That That's is, right. That was a criterion. And yeah. school kids learn to swim, since yeah. they they have to learn to swim somewhere. And so, yes, so that's one topic that they looked at. Another one was funding, obviously. Um, if there is an existing either swimming facility or project underway, um, what are the capital costs? What are the op operating costs? Uh, who is funding? Is the proportion between public and private funding? All of these issues. The third was operations. Um, if it's already built, if there's something, if there's a project, um, when is it open? Is it all se is it all year or seasonal? Depending on where it is, of course, in the country, and what are some of the operations um, major challenges? Another one was government involvement. So who is involved besides the immediate promoters? Um, and is it mostly the city? Does the state help? Uh, so the, the case studies they looked at exhibited very different combinations of these different actors. Yeah, in our case, it's, it will be Cambridge, Boston, and the state, the DCR. So there will be three governmental agencies. Yeah. And because it's a navigable river, it will be the federal government will have a say in it oh, as well. So them too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last two are marketing. Very important. How did this group, the initial group, or the current managers of the swimming facility, got the word out? How did they uh, outreach to whom? Given who the user groups were that they wanted to target, how did they do it and were they successful? And what are the more su successful techniques and strategies for doing that? And finally, controversy. Controversy, it could have been called obstacles. In some cases there is controversy around the idea of urban swimming, but really it's mostly resistance to the very idea. It, it, the the um, solution is to try as much as possible to get people used to the idea of reclaiming their urban rivers, yeah. and not only uh, for parks along the part uh, along the river, but also to jump in and swim. So yeah, that that's yeah. the major obstacle. So it's funny you mentioned controversy, but what you don't you didn't look at any of the lenses is the cleanliness of the water, which of course is in Boston a major controversy. I was told once. Well, you might be able to swim, but because people love the song, love that dirty water, they will never do it. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a, a psychological barrier that might be um, an issue. Yes, yes. And, and the uh, students so. did identify that for you know, Cambridge. There is a part of the report that talks about that. That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. As well as historical photos of when people did swim in the Charles and there were beaches along the Charles. So Yeah, they, but they swam in the Charles not because it was clean, it's just they didn't know it was dirty. So there's a, <laughs> there's a big difference in that. Well, so, now that we have fake news being normal, maybe <laughs> that's what we have to, to, to promote. Well, we still believe in science and we, <laughs> we actually now test the water 
uh, in North Point Park every day of the swim season. We working with Northeastern University. We have a graduate student whose job that is, mm -hmm. uh, because we do believe in science and the Department of Public Health and DCR yeah. and, and DEP. They want to. They want to see the numbers. So. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we also believe in truth still. So. Yeah. Um, so one of the first things that the students discovered was that um, Europe is really leading the, the way in urban river swimming. Uh, they're quite a bit ahead of us um, in that respect as well as many others. But um, And I'm only showing two examples, really Paris and Berlin, because they ex exhibit two different models of um, how to think about swimming in the river. So. The Josephine Baker piscine in, on the Seine is really a building, it's a floating building. You can see that it has rooms on both sides for facilities and the swimming pool is in the middle. It is open, of course, to the air, um, but it does look like a, f a floating building. You, you yeah. do have the sense that you are going into a public swimming pool. Yeah, and there was, um, just before we had our city splash, there was an article in the Globe it, it the headline was Parisian model, and they showed the the canal La La Davilette, which flows mm. into the, the Seine, and there is a swimming um, park that is very much like ours, and the French consul was very happy to see all that good publicity about um, the, the achievements of the French environmental yes. movement. So. Um, there is now an example in Paris where you can swim in river Directly, water, yes. so that is very exciting. And um, but you also have an example from Berlin here. Yes. So this is the Badeschaft. Badeschaft. The Badeschaft. Uh, it means basically a boat of swimming, the swimming yes. boat. <laughs> yeah. And I love this because it's a it's a barge that was rebuilt to be a shell. And it is fresh water and it's heated, so it's it's a swimming pool. It doesn't pretend to be the platform with the hole in it, but it is designed in a way to be as low as possible to the water, so that you have the impression of mm. being very close to the water. And like any uh, docking facility with um, rivers that go up and down, it's connected to the mainland through floating. Um, so it's depths. is it tidal? Um, no, not, not at this point, no, no, and not in the middle of the city like this. Yeah. Uh, but with surges, with storms, with, um, uh, you know, there's sometimes some Rain. movement. <clears throat> yeah. And, and the, the platforms that connect the swimming pool to the uh, riverbank are all sunning decks, and you can see on oh, very this popular. picture, very oh. popular. People just love it, if only for people watching or being watched, but at least they have the option. There is this swimming pool right there. Yeah. So it's very, very um, well used and an inspiration for many yeah. other efforts. But then um, I think the main task of the students was to look at American examples. Yes. Because um, as we know as city planners, if you tell people, well, people in Holland, they all bike. Americans say, well, you can't do that here. Or, you know, yeah. European examples are only relevant to a certain extent we need to show what's happening here yes they're they're very relevant in inspiring people to say oh this is possible they're not relevant in the sources of funding the government support um, people believe in government there so there's a lot more support and so here there's much more emphasis on doing it alone and not surprisingly also on private development and that's where some of the initiatives come. Mm -hmm. So the, they had six case studies that they looked at, the first one being Barton Springs in Austin, Texas. So this of course is not an urban river, Barton Springs is in Barton Creek which is fed by natural springs that come from the Edwards Aquifer underneath that whole area. So it's very unique in that sense. Not only is it fresh water, but it's extremely clear. It's spring mm. water. But the way it's relevant is that it's revered by the people of Austin and, and as well all over Texas and beyond as a wonderful place to come and swim. It has beaches on both sides, but not enormously. It's not supposed to be the beach land. Yeah. Um, and it's very close to the city. You can see downtown Austin uh, from wow. Barton Springs. So from that point of view, it's very relevant. And it's been established for a long time. So what have they learned about 
what are the best times of day of the season mm. uh, for users what are the more cha the more challenging times for maintenance and so on and so forth so and it's very public and yes. it's open to everybody and it's close to the city so that this is wonderful so we're coming to another one that is quite quite on a huge scale and very yes. a very challenging project so this is Chicago and it has two examples and they're at both extremes of a continuum uh, from public to private. So this is called Our Rivers, Our, Our Great Rivers Initiative. It's a master plan by the, supported by the city, but mostly by the metropolitan area to uh, clean up and improve three rivers that cross Chicago, the Calumet, the Chicago, and the Des Moines. So it's a very long range plan going from now to 2040. There are stages and phases of goals that they want to accomplish. It goes through many neighborhoods, so there are different uses along the way, different functions, um, but it's very ambitious and people are garnering interest into it because mm -hmm. they can come at it with very different reasons. Some go right through neighborhoods, they're very intimate. Others are part of the downtown display uh, function of mm -hmm. the city. So, yeah. um, but it's very long range and there are many, many actors involved. Um, and so yeah. right now they're in the stage of building public support, holding in yeah. innumerable And they still meetings. have big challenges in terms of water quality. Yes. Yes. The next one is um, <clears throat> called the uh, uh, Breakwater, um, Breakwater Chicago. And so that's in the lake. That's in Lake Michigan, and it is a private development. It's a floating resort. It's been called many things, floating party, uh, party barge, floating resort, floating island. Um, it's a vessel, basically. It will be built in uh, dry dock and then brought to this site. It has a self-contained swimming pool that is uh, fresh water and heated, and instead of being rectangular, it meanders through mm. um, the island or a barge, and it's really a, an entertainment center. The, yeah. the emphasis is on bars and restaurants and shops, um, <clears throat> and all of the slips around it are because the promoters noticed that there were there was a lot of recreational boating on the lake, but no place to go, no no, little, no small restaurant to yeah. go to. So that that's that will serve so that that's purpose. So that's for the martini drinking millennium. Yes, millennials. millennials. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, very different model. So this is called uh, Houston needs a swimming hole. This is their official name. And the graphic is wonderful because it's a great example of how to use an image to inspire people and how mobilize to them. <laughs> yes. yes, but it's completely unrealistic. This this makes it look like Houston has a beach on basically Galveston Bay, which it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> but that's the ideal. That's what people would love to make their way towards. And it's based on Nostalgia too, uh, which is the Shamrock Hotel, an enormous hotel that was built in 1946 in Houston that had the largest swimming pool in the world at the time, 146 feet by 152. It was so large that there was water skiing in the pool and it was open to the public. It of course had the tallest diving platform, all of the superlatives that you can think of when thinking of Texas in the 50s. Um, and it was only demolished in 1987, so people still remember it, including the three promoters of this. Yeah, three, yeah. Houston needs a swimming hole. Well, I'm going to move on to oh, right. a, a whole other city in <laughs> yes. a challenging river. So Nashville um, has the Cumberland River going through it, and it's a typical, very polluted, formerly industrial city that people for the longest time never would think of looking at uh, and aspire to swim in it. But little by little, with um, a lot of activity from nonprofit groups, people got used to the idea of, oh, well, maybe it is possible, and cleanup efforts were undertaken, and the city contributed by building parks on the riverbanks. 
and Nashville being the capital of uh, country music, there are now a lot of shows and concerts that are held on barges mm. in the river where all the people are on the bank, so they watch the show and they, they see, see the river. And, yeah, by they develop daytime longing. and by night. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to move on to yet a very different model. Yes, yeah, so this is Plus Pool in New York. A wonderful concept of uh, four uh, different depths of swimming pools linked together to form a cross. It is a floating uh, platform with um, swimming pools that take the water from the river but heavily filtrate it. So um, it's, it's not a hole in the, the river, very filtrated, uh, filtered water. Um, and of course being floating uh, you can move it and anchor it in different uh, places along. And that had a, a heavy also a uh, crowdfunding component just like our swim park we had Indigo yes. Go that was successful and they were very successful they came to it as designers and promoters right uh, it's, a, it's a very different model um, and what's very Nashville. remarkable is that these young guys who are designers and who only wanted to do this because they were frustrated by living in uh, such a dense and beautiful city but couldn't couldn't swim in the river that they saw all the time um, they turned down an offer by a developer to buy them out because they would have turned it into a private swimming yeah. pool yeah. so they're very committed to a, a, a wide range yeah. of diverse users and the final case is uh, portland where the willamette river runs through the middle of the city and there the approach is very uh, from the grassroots very small steps they organize a million small events and big ones so this is the annual big float where people come from everywhere and just float very very slowly in the river in fact invade the river so it's very visible yeah uh, there's another event called um, the goddesses the naked goddesses event which is uh, held at night um, and they have perfected the art of identifying very specific groups of users. For instance, those early morning swimmers. Swimmers, yes. And they accompany them with boats, you know, mm. so that people cross to one side and, and cross back to the other side. And granted, they are yeah. good swimmers, but it, it's that added security that's useful. So these are some of the, these are the examples that you students looked at. Yeah. And so tell us... Uh, how you worked with the students, I mean, they got all very excited. They really worked hard to do a lot of research. How did you help them? Well, uh, we are supposed to be hands-off. You know, this, they're supposed to work with their client and we guide them. But I've never been hands-off. I can't imagine how to be that. <laughs> so I followed their cases and I just got more and more excited. And of course, we do the editing and the, the usual support that a, a team effort demands. But what I find remarkable of this student team is that only one of the four is American and the others come from uh, other cultures. We have one from Turkey originally, he is American, but his family is still in Turkey, and uh, one from Pakistan and one from China. And yet they loved the topic and they jumped head, feet, I mean, feet first <laughs> in um, the task of calling these people uh, to the point of, of teaming up so that uh, one who spoke well English would always be with the other. Um, and they really warmed up to the topic to the point where they wrote up quite a nice and here project. they are in your yes. office, in our office. It was a very, it was a great, a great team. Yeah. And they actually, um, if, if you're interested in reading um, the report, it's a, a wonderful, um, substantial report with wonderful images and quotes and a lot of details that we weren't able to get into it. Um, you can find it on, on the website of the Charles River Conservancy where you can also read about our Swimmable Charles initiative, about the city splash, the swim race. So we have a whole section of our of our website dedicated to, um, to swimming because um, building a swim park is our next big capital project. You might have heard about our skate park, which took a few years to do because to build this project is very complicated and similar to the skate park, we will have to find out how to fund it. 
There will be some foundation funding, individuals. We started off as a Kickstarter, uh, actually it was Indiegogo, and that launched us to do the feasibility study and the depth study, the water testing. So we will have to find ways to fund all that. Mm -hmm. So um, if you, I want to thank you for, for your wonderful work and for your students' work. I hope you'll tell them how grateful we are. Definitely. And that has been a really wonderful experience. And now we're going to show the image of how people can find out about it. So thank you. It's other projects. <laughs> so that is how you can find the website. You can find um, the conservancy um, of how we work and the good work of Tufts. Thank you very much. Thank you.